we had a whole pandemic hit and then I got dumped and I was like, this is a true shit storm of a year. I got dumped on April Fool's Day, right? Over the phone. And I didn't believe I was being dumped because it was <laughs> April Fool's Day. <laughs> oh. And they used, have, did you meet them? You've definitely met them. I, 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 yeah, I've I was met gonna say, I think you've both met So obviously we like, we obviously got on dead well. We were a fucking couple. And we had the same kind of sense of humour. So when the phone rang on April Fool's Day, there was a brief moment where I thought I was going to be proposed to. Which is, <laughs> oh! which is so... Tragic now you think oh, about it. Oh my god. I was like, oh my god, because I'd always said if he proposed to us, I wanted it to be something to do with comedy. So either proposing at a gig or like at a festival. And I was like, oh my god, April Fool's Day, what a day to propose to a comedian. And he gives us this really like big, big far too detailed speech about how he didn't love us anymore and I was like he is really committed to this April Fool's like what well, I almost believe that he doesn't like us anymore and I let him get right to the end of it and I went it's after 12 mate you're the fool and he was like what are you on about <laughs> <laughs> and I was like it's after oh 12 heart. I went I don't believe you and he was like no Lauren I'm being serious and I was like I don't buy it and he was like well, it's <laughs> And then by April 6th, you were like, he's really committing to this yeah. bit. <laughs> and then Holy I was like, shit. oh, I genuinely thought, he'll sleep on it. He'll sleep on it and it'll be, he'll realise his prank backfire. And then he was like, so how are you going to get your stuff back from London? And I was like, good question. <laughs> Very good question. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to be miserable if I don't get a job. So I went and got a job at Morrison's and turns out, still miserable. <laughs> okay, let's just, I love the, it. I, that hot, I've got, I'm so heartbroken to Morrison's. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many things. There's so there's just there's so many things. Uh huh. So did you live with him in London? Yeah, for two years. Right. Uh huh. So Right. So did he so was it yours and his or was it his and you lived there? We both rented together. Right. Like, yeah. But he still had the fucking audacity to be like, How are you gonna get your stuff because out of my house? I'd moved out before the panda. He'd gone back to his mum's and I'd gone back to Newcastle. So I'd sent all my stuff to his mum's house, thinking I was coming back to London in a couple of months' time. Um, but obviously, like, no removals could happen. So I was doing Richard Heron's podcast in my bedroom in June while a removal van just pulled up outside my house with all my life's possessions. So I'd, like, finished this podcast, and I was like, man, isn't it good to feel like a comedian again? I was so funny on that podcast, and I came downstairs, and my mum was like, surprise, all your shit's here. And I was like, oh. <laughs> he paid a removal van. to. He paid half a removal van, and oh, good I guy. got invoiced for the other half. Oh, he great guy. Do you know what? I'll he was say. always a gobshite. <laughs> <laughs> like, he was, though. Like, I met him a few times, and I was always like, there's something fucking wrong with this gun. <laughs> I said, to be honest, I said, what, what we're going to do about paying for this removal van? Because, you know, working class girl, I do like to pay me way, but also I was like, I shouldn't have to pay it. And I was like, I suppose we could pay half. And he went for it. And I was like, mm, that wasn't the right option. Um, and I was like, right, so if you're going to charge us half invoices and I'll write it off as a tax expense. And he did invoices. And so now on my fucking tax spreadsheet, I've had to be like, break up removal van. <laughs> <laughs> But at least you put two kisses on the invoice. No. <laughs> Imagine trying to explain that. I'm the accountant in a year's time. I'll be like, right, as if I've got an accountant. <laughs> it's me. It's just going to be me looking in the mirror in April going, well, Lauren, you fucked up a lot in 2020. <laughs> Amazing. Oh. What a bell sniff. Yeah. If you're going to like move some your ex's stuff, back to them don't mm -hmm. be like i need half the money do you know what i'm more sad about though and i think this says a lot about me priorities because we live together he had the ps4 and i bought the sims for the ps4 and i'm really sad about me sims oh he's got your save he's got the game he's got the game they're gonna be dead in the pool aren't they they're done this, them, them stairs are long gone. God, it's like having kids, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and I'd built me and him. Get joint custody of the Sims. Exactly. Want me Sims back. As someone who's recently gone through a, a similar but not exactly the same thing, mm -hmm. I want to say I reckon it's harder to have a dog in a breakup oh, than yeah. kids. You think it's harder to have a dog <laughs> over ki having kids on every possible life. No, no, having a dog is it's the same emotionally. It's more difficult in a lot of ways because your kid doesn't shit on the neighbor's garden or shouldn't. And I think if a dog dies, that's sort of worse than with a kid because if a kid dies, you can actually say goodbye and the dog's just whimpering. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you can't take a kid to the doctors and get it put down. So when a kid dies, you don't feel guilty. Adam, these things don't always land. 
what happened to the dog? <laughs> <laughs> you fucking prick. I'm sick of hearing this stuff about dogs. Every time I go, being a dad's kind of difficult. It's like, ah, shut up. I'd have sex. But having my mini is very difficult <laughs> because she needs walking twice a day sometimes. Listen, I've just laughed at fart hours and it stings. So, <laughs> oh. so just get ready for that. Put oh, uh, yeah. in an enclosed space. Oh. Um, right. Here's the thing. I, I do lean into that and it is a joke half the time, but I do think breakup wise. Do you know what I mean? I can't ask because I let her take the dog. Because, oh, that's big. Right? Yeah. I, I would have like, gone full custody battle. Yeah, you well, got I a court for things like that. <laughs> well, there should be a court for things like that, shouldn't there? <laughs> but also. <laughs> This has worked out really well. I'm not dealing with COVID and your boff. I don't need to. I don't need to deal with a pandemic and the smell of your arsehole. Accept it. Ah! Ah! Come on. Oh no. Oh. He's marinating. Tom, Tom the intern, burn that. <laughs> Thanks, kid. First job. But if Laura fucked off, she's still got to let you see Etta. I'm not allowed to see Minnie. Oh, da, na, na. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a nightmare. You should be able to like yeah. be like, no, I get the dog. Yeah, on you know Tuesday weekend and half term. <laughs> you know, yeah. if if Laura did that and then withheld custody, I couldn't go to a pound and spend twenty quid and adopt another child. You literally can. Um, it's I think just it's as more... easy to adopt kids as it is dogs. Uh, you don't not. even need a six foot fence for the kids. I think yeah. as these videos are on YouTube and I get called a nonce twice a week, <laughs> I don't think I we're adopting. Say, just take one from the park. There's loads. <laughs> oh my god, that's the second child abduction joke. A joke in two sections. <laughs> no wonder we're all mates. You fucking got the same mental illness. Yeah. Just steal one. The three. Lola, yeah. If you could adopt, mm -hmm. right, a child. Yeah. I just want to say. If she agrees with me, right? Of any ethnicity. Uh-huh. What would you go for? Asian. Yes! <laughs> yes! Hey, now that you're two single, both of you are single, you stay the fuck away from each other. Because you'd be an evil couple. Well, yeah, stay like... the fuck away from mine and Adam's new half English, half Asian family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I okay, can't no. believe that way. <laughs> oh uh, my I God. said in the first off, so you know the first off just me and him? Yeah. I said that, like, obviously, Asians make the cutest babies. Yeah. They absolutely do. See, I'm not fucking mental. You you're will, all you mental. Both no, make, I agree with you. You will bo <laughs> you'll both make beautiful parents of abducted <laughs> foreign <stolen> children. Child. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, I oh, can't wait to see Weird it. Weird Trap family. <laughs> yeah, we don't put our kids on Facebook, you know, because, you know, we don't want them to be traced. <laughs> For the best, isn't it? Oh, right. What were we talking about? Morrison's. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you can adopt the kid. Track, track and trace. Just as easy as track you can and adopt. trace on stolen Chinese children. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not signing these forms. Why? Because of COVID? No, because of little Vinny. <laughs> Vinny Chan. Played it safe with the name there, didn't you? <laughs> I'll go with Vinny. I thought about it. But I knew that if I picked a name, it would just be slightly Chinesey sounds. 